823, welcome back. Tuesday morning here on BT. Hopefully you are loving the sunshine right now. The heat has been incredible. However, the heat can be a health risk. Dr. Vetlu joining us once again to talk about this. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, so normal elevation of temperature. Kids, adults, obviously we love being outside, but uh, what do we need to really be aware of, of when we enter a risky territory? It's really important to be aware of heat illness. Heat illness is when the body takes on heat faster than it can lose it. Now the body normally has ways to get rid of heat, but when the ambient temperature is too hot, those ways break down. And if the body temperature gets too hot, even just um, a few degrees, then the body's organs start to malfunction. And you have a great example of the difference when we look at the symptoms between heat illness and heat stroke. So let's take a look at this and uh, break down the, the key details for us of what to watch. Yeah, so heat illness is on a spectrum. So there's heat exhaustion, which is a more mild form. And then as it gets worse, you can develop heat stroke, which is a, a medical emergency. It can cause death. Like it can, it's very serious. Uh, um, there was a statistic that about 120 people in Toronto on average die of heat illness each year, heat stroke. So some of the symptoms include headache, dizziness, fainting, fatigue, malaise, uh, vomiting, skin changes like sweaty skin, pale, cool skin, you can get a heat rash, and then if it gets more severe, you can get a fast heart rate, fast breathing, you can get seizures, coma, your skin becomes red and hot, and you can even get, you know, the, the most severe result, which would be death. So obviously you want to catch it way before that point. So if you're starting to feel some of the symptoms of heat exhaustion, which was sort of the earlier, milder symptoms, then you want to start to be aware and get yourself out of the heat. So what are some of the guidelines? Uh, obviously, we want to be outside, want to yes. enjoy the sunshine, but time to be outside, the amount of time we're outside, and how to avoid things like sunburn. What do you recommend? Yeah, heat illness is definitely preventable. So you want to try to stay out of the sun between the hours of 11 a.m. and 4 p.m., the hottest hours. If you're in the sun, take breaks from the sun. It's people, especially who are wearing a lot of protective equipment, people who are exercising in the sun, people who are wearing a lot of clothing in the sun, then they have to be more careful. Careful. You want you do want to wear something to protect your skin, though. So usually loose-fitting, long-sleeve clothing, light-colored clothing that will be more helpful to keep you cool. People who are um, young and people who are old are at higher risk of heat illness. And then, of course, you want to drink lots of water. Avoid alcohol, any kind of diuretics that might leach water from your body. Um, Hydration factor, yes. how does that differ on a day like this outside of how much more water we're drinking, whether it's per hour, per day, uh, what do you recommend? If you're thirsty, you're already dehydrated. So just, just remember to keep drinking water. It depends on how much you're sweating. Okay, and there's another great graphic too. Let's bring this up, and you yes. touched on a couple of these of who is at risk, uh, different age groups, and then what you can truly do to stay cool, hydrated. Yeah, exactly. So different age groups. I talked about people who are younger and people who are older. Sometimes it depends on like the body surface area ratio. If you have um, not as much skin compared to not as much um, body mass, then you can't cool as efficiently. Children might not know when they're overheated. Elderly people might not have. Um, they might have cognitive difficulties or they might not have any access to air conditioning and they might overheat without knowing it. People who have medical conditions might not be able to cool themselves properly. People who are taking certain medications may be at higher risk of heat illness. And then we have um, talking about cooling down, right? Especially in a heat wave, you may actually need to get to an air conditioned place. A fan might not be adequate. Really good. And I guess final, and you've touched on a couple of these points already, if we know something is off and we have some of these symptoms and we're not at the medical emergency of heat stroke, uh, simple treatments as soon yes. as we get indoors yes. of what we can do. Get out of the heat. You can spray water on yourself, take a cool shower or a cool bath, remove any unnecessary clothing that might be keeping the heat close to your skin, and drink lots of cool fluids. If you're not feeling better after an hour or if you have any of the signs of heat stroke that we talked about earlier, then you need to call 911 and see a doctor because it could be a medical emergency. Great advice. And any online resources uh, for us to look at through the summer season to make sure we're hydrated and uh, avoiding heat stroke? Good question. The HealthLink BC website is an excellent website. I always recommend people to see that. And the Government of Canada, Health Canada, has an excellent website as well. Good deal. Are you enjoying the air conditioning in here this morning, by the way? I am enjoying the air conditioning, but sometimes I get too cold in air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough go with the temperature. Listen, this yeah. is great information. Obviously, we'll pop that on our website, too, so you can keep it for reference. Thanks so much, Yvette, for coming through. Uh, we'll take a break.